Our, our first paper will be presented by Daniel Navia on behalf of his, uh, his colleagues in uh, Buenos Aires. It's entitled Full Myocardial Revascularization Purely with Bilateral Internal Thoracic Arteries Effect on Late Survival Analysis of 3,757 Patients. You'll have to tell us what the difference is between full, complete, total. <laughs> I'm confused. <laughs> <clears throat> Dr. Sand, Dr. Pomar, members and guests, I would like to thank the association for the privilege to present our work. No disclosures. Single internal thoracic cardiac rather than a vein graft to the left anterior descending coronary artery is recognized the standard therapy for coronary bypass for, for patients with multivessel disease. Assuming that the arterial cone may yield a better outcome than a vein graft, the right internal thoracic artery has been consider a logic step forward to revascularize the non-LAD coronary system. The use of both internal thoracic cardiac has shown a decreased risk of death and need for reoperation of PCI when compared with one ITA in combination with vein graft. This is expressed in this important paper of Cleveland Clinic experience. Increasing evidence continues to demonstrate the survival advantage for bilateral ITA over the use of single ITA. In an update made analysis by ways, including 27 observations and study, bilateral ITA group demonstrated a significant better long-term survival than the single ITA group, expressed by hazard ratio 0.78 favor in the beta user. In adequate length, the free RITA has often limited the possibility to bypass the posterior marginal branches of the circumflex of the distal right of this conduit. Tector described a technique in which the RITA is anastomosed to the side of the attached lead of forming a T graph configuration. This can place the RITA 10 centimeters or more closer to the distal circumflex on the right, allowing it to reach these vessels. Our hypothesis of full myocardial vascularization or complete myocardial vascularization using exclusive beta can be safely performed with low in hospital morbidity and mortality and maybe have a positive impact in long term survival. The aim of our study is to compare the full myocardial revascularization purely with bi bilateral ITA with a standard group of patients with a single ITA plus other type of conduits, right artery or sulfame vein graft. This is a single centered study, a retrospective analysis of prospective gathered data over 18 years from November 1986 to May 2014. And the inclusion criteria was isolated cavity in patients with two or three vessel disease and we use a propensity score matching methodology with user to identify to compare the group of patients. This study includes 3,757 consecutive patients with isolated cabbage. Elective surgery was performed in 60% of the cases, and off pump technique was used in 72% of the patients. The entire group of the patients was divided in two the group of the bilateral ATA and T graph configuration, 2,098 ATA patients, and the group of single ATA plus other type of conduits in 1,659 patients. The surgical technique using the bilateral ATA group consists in using both internal thoracic artery as exclusive conduit for coronary vascularization. The right ATA was divided at its origin and connected end to side to the in situ lita which was grafted to the LAD as a sequential T graft to the circumflex in the distal RCA. This is a short video clip show how is our, our routine for off-pump coronary artery bypass grafting. The quality of the anastomosis was assessed as transit time flow measurements and upper flow pros. And postoperative angiography was used as, as a control in a series of patients and was reported in a previous study that was published in the analysis of thoracic surgery in 2008. In terms of the strategy of the grafting, uh, the, the left internal thoracic artery 2,090 conduits and total of 2,350 distal anastomosis were performed. The majority were grafted to LED and almost 10% of the diagonal as a sequential graft. The right internal thoracic artery 2,098 conduit were used either to graft mainly to the circ and the distal right and considering 2,960 sequential anastomosis at all of 4,271 4, 2, distal anastomosis were performed. Diagonal artery is almost 20%, circumflex 94%, RCA and 60%. Results. The preparative clinical profile shows that bilateral ITA patients were younger, male, have more hypertension, smoking history, more left ventricular dysfunction, more flame main disease, and trivasal disease. Single ITA patients were done mainly on pump surgery, 
more real surgery, have more peripheral vascular disease. The 30-day outcome and adjusted showed a significant difference in 30-day mortality, 4.4 for the single ITA group compared with 1.2% for the beta group. Also, there was a higher incidence of postoperative myocardial infarction in the single ITA group. There was no difference between groups in the incidence of external infection, postoperative stroke, and other complications. The adjusted survival couple of mayor data showed that the 10 years of follow-up, the bilateral internal thoracic artery group had a significant better long-term survival than a single ITU group of patients. For further analysis, we divide the patient with a single ITA in two subgroups, depending on the type of conduit user for graft, the non-LID system. Subgroup so A, patient with a single ITA and right lateral graft with or without veins, and subgroup so B, patient with a single ITA and saphane vein graft only. In this subgroup A, 1,242 patients, the non LID system were grafted with the radial right artery to the circumflex territory with or without a fame being grafted to the RCA. The radial artery was used as a free graft in T-encompassing T configuration from the, from the LITA, and less frequently as a free graft from the ORA. And in subgroup B, 388 patients, circumflex and our right territory were grafted with a fame being graft. In this an adjusted survival analysis, the beta patient or the beta patients uh, group, we include the two subgroup of the single ITA patient for the analysis. At 10 years, bilateral ITA patients had a 15% increase in survival compared with a group of patients with a single ITA supplemented by safan being graph only. It's a blue line. Also, single ITA patient with a radial artery graph has significant better long-term survival than the patient with a single ITA in veins. It's a black line. And finally, patients with a right artery has similar long-term survival than bilateral ITA patients at 10 years. However, there is a superior beneficial effect by using beta over the left ITA and right artery at 10 years, expressed by Cox regression analysis has a ratio of 0.48 in beta group versus 0.60 in the single ITA group. The study group of the propensity score analysis was 488 match pairs in each group. The clinical profile of the matches has no significant difference. The 30-day outcome on the matched pair showed that in hospital mortality 1.6 in the bilateral ITA group and 2.9 in the single ITA group, and no significant difference. And also, there was no difference in the incidence of sterile infection, postoperative MI, postoperative stroke, and other complications between groups. The survival curve in this propensity group showed that it was a 10% increase in survival at 10 years of follow-up, again favoring the use of beta grafting. Limitations. Um, <clears throat> this is a single center retrospective study, and although the propensity score matching algorithm produced rather comparable groups, the study was not randomized, so we cannot rule out additional effects of missing cover aids. The study period was long, and most of the single ITA patient procedures were done in the early part of the study. Our experience in beta graphing came later. This issue may have played a role in the final results. Conclusions, full myocardial vascularization purely with bilateral ITA graphic information can be safely performed with lowering hospital mortality, and it may be associated with improved long-term survival compared with the use of single ITA with other type of conduits. Although more technical demanding, bilateral ITA off-pump in T graphic information allow a more efficient use of conduit without RT manipulation. Thank you very much. The invited discussant is a new member of last, from last year, Michael Halkos. Thank you. Dr. Navi, I want to congratulate you and your colleagues from Buenos Aires for an excellent contribution. Appreciate uh, receiving the paper well in advance. I'd like to thank the AATS for this opportunity. This presentation and manuscript adds to the growing body of observational data supporting the use of both internal thoracic arteries during coronary bypass surgery. I'm gonna make a couple of comments and then ask three questions. Uh, as you described, there were 3,757 patients undergoing cabbage from 1996 to 2014. A large proportion, relatively 55.8% received beta grafting alone. 442 received LIDA plus another graft, frequently the radial artery. 
30-day mortality uh, was similar in both groups as well as uh, other hospital outcomes and propensity match groups. Importantly, um, it's important to note that there were only 485 match pairs, which represents 25 percent of the total study population, and this does suggest that there were important differences between the groups. In the propensity match pairs, uh, the deep sternal wound infection was 2.3 percent in beta and 1.4 percent in CETA. No statistical differences were found, but it's important to take this into context of what randomized trial data we do have from Taggart's group in the one-year ART data, which showed a deep sternal wound infection of 1.9 versus 0.6 for CETA, which was statistically different. As you mentioned in your limitations, there uh, were a little differences in when the procedures were performed. The, mean, the median follow-up for the beta group was approximately four years compared to the CETA group uh, at 8.5 years, uh, which, as you mentioned, uh, did suggest a change in practice during the study period. And, uh, and then in unadjusted comparisons, long-term survival was better in beta compared to CETA as a whole, but similar to CETA plus the radial. And then in the propensity match group, beta was associated with better long-term survival, although I think it's important to note that there were only 45 beta patients followed out to 10 years compared with the CETA group, whether or not the radio was used. So I'd like to, I, I agree with the authors, and I agree with you that beta may provide a survival advantage, and I think it's important to say appropriately selected patients, <laughs> uh, but urge caution, similar to what the other authors and discussants have said, that there is some level of selection bias in these observational trials. I also believe uh, that, and more generally, that a second arterial graph, whether it's the RETA or the radial, especially to the left-sided circulation, will likely prove beneficial when used in the appropriate patient. And obviously, we all await the ART results from Taggart's group. So for my first question, can you comment or do you have any patency data? You alluded to that earlier from 2008 regarding the use of the sequential RETA uh, from the circumflex to the RCA. And I bring that up specifically because your results are excellent. But for those of us that don't routinely sequential the RETA, you have two large coronary territories dependent off of the LEDA uh, from the T graft. And a lot of us have concerns about using any arterial graft, much less a sequential RETA graft to a right coronary target. Yeah, thank you, Michael, for your comments. Um, this, is, this has been a, an evolving process. We started doing an uh, off-pump technique in 2001, and by that time, we were using uh, just single ITA and veins. We, we switched to ray ladder in 2000, and, and from 2002 and three until now, we're doing just only two mimers and the same thing as you yeah. see in the video. Um, we published our, our um, angiogram, post we, we did uh, 250 post-operative angiogram in, in, the, in the house of the patients and with a con informed consent. And the patency of the PDA was 60, uh, 90, 91 percent between the sixth circ and the, and the right. Uh, I, I agree with you that the PDA also is in the right coronary artery is a difficult one. Sometimes it's small, sometimes it's calcified. Um, but we are very confident in, in that and we got uh, lower, lower patency rate on the limit to the cir to the LAD for sure and to the circumflex. But if the, the mammary is okay and the technique is okay and the PDA is, is comfortable to do it and the diameter is good, the patency, the patency is okay and we're very pleased for that. As a corollary to that, um, is there a degree of stenosis where you will not use that as a sequential in the right territory? No, we always, as, as you, uh, your practice, I'm sure, uh, we, we graph patients with, with, the, with the stenosis higher than 70 percent, you know, and we, we are not concerned about moderate lesions. Okay. Okay. You know, we know about the competitive flow and all that, but in our experience, in, in this series of patients, just only 10 percent patients, we figure out that may, may have a competitive flow. And it's, there are also sometimes technical issues in, in performing the anastomosis in order to, to see if they're secluded because of that. For my second question, um, I was wondering and thinking, you know, because there were so few patients in the Lita plus saphenous vein group, only 388, would this comparison have been better focused or cleaner 
if the two groups being compared were beta versus leta plus radial and just kick out the 388 saphenous vein patients. No, I understand. It's, it's part of the limitation of the study. It's a long period. We, we are sort of a historical experience of the whole experience of, between 1996 to 2000, as I mentioned in, in, in the talk. Uh, that's the limitation. The, the, the patients that were done in the middle part of the, our experience. Now, all the surgeons, we are four surgeons doing all the adult cardiac surgery, and we're performing 800 cases a year. And all the surgeons perform the same time of technique, you know, not all bilateral ITA, all pump. That's a routine for the service, for the department, yeah. you know. And the single ITA and the vein graft have well, been 12, 12 years old. So that leads to my last question. Who is getting saphenous vein grafts in your population? Is there any criteria, uncontrolled diabetics, morbidly obese, severe COPD, that you're not using both mammaries? Uh, no, no, because we, oh, as a team, uh, we have been working with the same, the same team in the last 17 years, and it's very comfortable for us to take two IMA instead of going to the legs and take a vein for that. And also, as you know, all the patients complain more of the incisions of the veins and, the, and their arm, which is only one and two. We are, we are, we are very, very active and very uh, enthusiastic about the results are good. My myasthenial infections is not so great. We are very uh, uh, pushing to, to get the blood sugar down in the diabetic patients and during the, during the procedure and during the hospitalization of the patients. And that's what our result, you know. Okay, thank you. Are there questions from the floor? I have a couple of questions. One, uh, do you skeletonize the, yeah. all the, the arteries? It's like a video, yeah. Second, uh, how do you land the graft to the PDA? I mean, uh, the posterior descending uh, as a T graft. That's a T graft. T -graph. T -graph, yeah. At the distal, do you come in perpendicular or longitudinal? At the at the distal end, your T graft is T proximal. Yeah, at the PDA is in T graft. At the distal end, T also. Is a T. T. That's the only way to reach something. Yeah, because otherwise you have to go around. I'll reach it that way. No. Other questions from the floor? If not, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.